Hello and welcome back to a miserable day in Desert Ranger. As you can see, the weather is not fantastic, but some of my crops from the last episode have grown. In fact, most of them have. It's just these chrysanthemum here, which haven't. So let's harvest all these, see what we get. Okay, so it's clear aside from those chrysanthemum over there. I'm going to turn all the corn I have into seeds. And I think I have some more corn back at the base. Let me go grab that. Okay, so I had some more chrysanthemum, some more corn, and some more goldenrod at the base. So let's turn all the corn into seeds. And potato into seeds. And then I'll plant them and see how many more slots we have on the farm here. And that leaves us with loads of aloe and yucca seeds, which are just going to be used to fill in the rest of the slots so that the slots aren't wasted. Drone, please move. Which leaves me with a lot of yucca and a lot of aloe, which I can turn into aloe cream, which would be turned into 38 more first aid bandages, and these can be held for yucca juice smoothies. So in between episodes, I went to see the traders just because I thought I've done that so many times in the series, you guys don't need to see it again. I've been buying a lot of decoration blocks, and that's just so that I can have stuff to fill in the ranger station when I get around to repairing it. For some reason, I thought I'd need cash register. I don't see why I would need that. And it cost me a lot of money. I only have like 40k jukes left. So yeah, and I also bought a bunch of electrical parts and crafted those into powered vault doors, which I'm going to go put at the base now. Right then, so I think let's go and see Trader Hugh 2 down there. He's really close to Bob's Boars and Carl's Corn, so he could maybe even give a quest to go there. I believe it's a tier 3. I'm not 100% sure what the POI is called, so that could be annoying. Um, And he'll probably have a tier 4 available in this region there, and that'll probably be enough to get me the level I need. So hopefully that all goes to plan. I have everything I need on me, and I'll see you guys over at Trader Hugh 2. Alright, here we are, Trader Hugh 2. Now, one thing I'm interested in is how far away is that? So that's 750 meters away. We can use that in the quest browser to sort of guess if we're going to the right place. It has one 789 meters away, which could be it, but it's also a restore power, so that would not be helpful. So it looks like he's not going to give us a Bob's Boars and Carl's Corn POI. That is fine. Let's take this clear four. Rural driving. Oh, I hate this POI. One. Just sell him a couple things I brought here. There we go. I guess you're Drone, hold so on to this money. After all. Let's go do the rural drive-in. That'll definitely give me the level I need to get Huntsman 3. And then we can go fight Grace. Really quickly, let me grab this meat. I do still need more farm plots. Ooh, and there's corn in this farm. This means I can get more seeds for my farm. That coyote just killed a rabbit. And now I'm going to kill it. And now I'm going to eat you both. That's nature, right. There's that skill point I was looking for. Let's go Huntsman. Now we're getting 60% more meat from stuff. As well as like leather and animal fat, but the main thing is meat. For me, anyway. Also, I believe it does give me more rotten flesh. If I was to find a dog or a vulture or a zombie bear. Medicine cabinet. I think I saw some vitamins in there. Oh, uh, let's not play this game. There we go. There we go. We can cure the um, fatigue.
This might be more magnum range, to be honest. We're even going. Oh, he survived. Armored zombie, of course. There we go. Maybe I should put a scope in my revolver. Then I can put a suppressor on the revolver. Then I can read all those fun comments about how you can't suppress a revolver in real life. Which everyone knows, by the way. You don't have to keep commenting about it. Doesn't make you look any smarter. You're just repeating annoying things everybody knows already. Oh, I got lucky there. And of course, I missed some zombies somewhere, because that's just how tier 4s work in Alpha 20. Right, let's see what loot we got here. Rad remover, or anything I can even put that on. I could put it on my magnum. It wouldn't hurt. I mean, more damage. I've never found the regeneration of radiated zombies to be all that big of a deal, to be honest. Let's do this the normal way. Ah. Uh... And the award for the most boring gameplay mechanic goes to the fun pimps for this bullshit. What do we got? Steel tools, scope, scrap that. Uh, scrap that? Military armor parts is probably worth more. Yeah, three would probably be worth more. Right, let's get out of here. Oh wait, yeah, we still have to clear out the last couple of guys around the other side of the place. I wonder, how much meat do I get from a chicken now? 16, that is... 3 boiled meats or 3 meat stews from one chicken. If I had Master Chef 4, that would actually mean I could get 4 meat stews from one chicken. And that's a lot of health from one chicken if you think about it. I can't remember the exact amount of health that a meat stew gives, but I think it's like 30. So that would be like 120 health from killing one chicken and having some corn and potatoes. Farming is not bad if you can tolerate the tediousness of it. Surprise, surprise. What do we got? Level 6 I military helmet? Sure. Steel pick help. or sledgehammer or magnum ammo. Honestly, I'll take the magnum ammo. No, wait, no, I won't. Because I can craft loads of that now. So let's just take this pick and sell it to him. Those damn military things helmet. Like oh yeah, much cakes. better. Let's take these off. I didn't realise my helmet wasn't already military, but that's because of the cowboy hat mod. There we go. I look exactly the same. Let's sell him some stuff here. Actually, I kind of want most of this. Even the money would be nice. Right, let's go and do Bob Spores Carl's Corn. Oh, speaking of boars, you has boars. <laughs> Apparently. Let's just, uh, let's just, uh, achoo, it was an accident. Oh my god, did you see that? He's got a gun. He was gonna shoot me. This guy's feral. I had to put them down here. Your boars are insane. Did we normally get 30, now we get 48. That's, that's pretty good. 96. 144 meat from that. And that's three boars. Where we're going, there's more than three boars, let me tell you. That's a stack of meat and a bit. Also kill this coyote just for testing purposes. Don't run away from me! 19. 19? A weird number. I think that gives me extra feathers from vultures as well, which is really nice, actually. Feathers can be a pain at times. Although I suppose at this stage I should switch to steel bolts. They don't require any feathers. Why haven't I just done that? I can just make steel bolts, right? Am I missing something? Is there crossbow bolts? Of course. I actually did. What? Excuse me. 
You're in the wrong biome. Now let's see how much meat we get from a wolf. 40, not bad. So how much meat have I just got from this mission so far? So we know how much we get from the other one. Almost two stacks, just from killing things. Right, let's go to the POI and get started there. And hopefully no strange animals will get in my way and distract me for another five minutes. Here it is. Folks, if you've not tried this POI, if you don't know what's here, this is one of the best POIs in the game. Specifically, if you're in need of food. Because the whole place is made of food. It's also filled with cement and cobblestone and super corn. Fantastic POI. And I really like the redesign they did of it. Give it a nice little outside area. Anyway, let's get started with this. Uh, I think we're on the wrong side of the building, actually. Well, that's a lot of rotten flesh as well. That was strange. The desert united against me for a moment there. So, when you come into Bob's Spores and Carl's Corn, this is the first room here, you're gonna find boars. Many, many boars. Now, boars aren't crazy hostile usually, but they're not friendly. You see, they're, they're, they're reasonably chill, but they do fight back. And they do the same amount of damage as everything else. So don't just think, oh, it's a pig. <laughs> What's the problem? These guys will kill you if you don't pay attention. They're worth a lot of meat each. Usually they're 30, but I'm obviously boosted by the Huntsman perk or whatever it's called. Also, am I boosted by the Hunter books? That is worth checking really quickly. I am not. Okay. Well, this will give you an extra 10% from all your kills as well. So if you'd really want to make the most of this POI, getting that first would be a good idea as well. Um, and of course, if you really, really wanted the most of this POI, you would fully max out the Huntsman, but that's a bit excessive. Unless you're already doing Fortitude build, in which case, go ahead. Just a good perk. It gives you so much food. We got another boar. Also, there's loads of um, gore piles in this POI which are just free rotten flesh, which you can use for your farm plots, or you can use it in hobo stew. So this is more food, assuming you have a farm and can make hobo stew. This is all just food absolutely everywhere. Uh, let me kill this guy. Now, if you get unlucky and your boar falls like that way, you're going to have a hard time breaking it. The easiest part of these to break is the top. You see? You can just get in there and then chop up your boar. I say that because a lot of the times when I was doing this early on in my playthroughs of Seven Days to Die, I would like break through one of these bars. The top is usually pretty fragile, you can just do that instead. That boar went the exact wrong way. Go. Also, I shouldn't understate the importance of getting lots of animal fat from this PY, because you're going to need a lot of animal fat to make most of these good items. There's a zombie somewhere very close, I'm not sure where. Ah, hello. What are you doing? Also, yeah, regular zombies do still spawn in this PY. It's not exclusively boars. Got some more boars in this room. I probably wasted a bit of meat there. Yeah, a little bit. And we got one hiding around this corner. Let's pop out here. Really quickly, just deal with some of the zombies I've attracted here. Let me just come down completely. Uh, I'll grab this cobble. 
and there's actually a load of cement out here as well and I don't think the PY ever takes you out to this part so we'll just grab that yep yeah, cool let me put some stuff in my gyrocopter really quickly because I'm already filling up on a lot of stuff here okay so that is what I'm dealing with let's get back in there Okay, so this is where I jumped out. We want to go over here and in here. Oh, a level 4 pistol just in a nightstand. Okay, we're at that level, are we? Got some more boars in here. Let's go ahead and shoot this guy. Oh, he just dropped instantly. Ugh, have to go in there with him. Let's, um... Ah, yes, one of the cement rooms. I'm gonna grab these for the clay. I need clay. By the way, if you do that to your own farm plots, you'll actually just get the farm plot back. You won't get, like, clay or anything. So you can move your farm plots around if you didn't know. So in this um, tube thing is your first piece of super corn. I obviously have living off the land these, so I'm probably going to get a decent amount in there. Yep, four. Super corn is a crop that isn't naturally occurring in any other PYs, at least to my knowledge. It may have added a few more in Alpha 20, but, but it's used in those really expensive things like Awesome Sauce, Moonshine, and Learning Elixir, as well as glue if you want. But it's really not necessary for glue. You can use bones for that, usually. But it's an option. Damn, look at all that meat. Right, we got some zombies in here then? No? I assumed there was. Right, so this room's just filled with useful stuff. You've got workbenches, which you can scrap down for forged iron and mechanical parts. You've got more super corns, which are going to give you three to four each, depending on your level of living off the land. If you don't have living off the land, you'll get one. Still decent, though. Turn those all into seeds just now. That's six more super corn seeds for me. An anvil, cool. Lots more bodies. Any actual zombies? Nope. Be sure to check for the munitions box or weapons bag that spawns under here as well. Ergonomic grip, nice. I can't pick it up. Give me a second here. Four bones. I mean, if you haven't figured out that something bad's gonna happen by all the dead bodies in here, I mean, you're an idiot. Let me do this. I want this bag. Ah, a bone, of course. And then let's chainsaw this. And when you're looking in this room, you're gonna want to look in that direction there, to the west. That's where the fun happens. Now I'm gonna take it. Oh, there it is. Hello, Grace. Um, so if it's early game, just just um, pipe bomb it, but I'm going to do something a bit smarter. So I want to preserve as much of the meat as possible. But yes, that is a giant boar. Its name's Grace. It's filled with meat. And it does hit very hard, so be careful. Uh, where's it gone? There we go, dead. How much meat can I get from Grace here? Big green eyes. 160. So you'll normally get 100 meat from that, and I got 160 because Huntsman made the maths nice and easy for me there, game. And then the last thing to do is break my way out of here, which we'll need the chainsaw for. More bones. this chest open it's only a tier three but 
Might as well. Grenade schematic. Not bad. But my inventory is completely full, so let me drop some dumb stuff I have here. There we go. Got some attachments and explosives. Nice. Now, if you want that loot really easily, by the way, the cage is actually the entrance to it, and it's really low health, so you can just... Do that with a pickaxe or a stone axe and get to the loot. You don't have to fight Grace, you can just come back up and you're good. Now then, let's get to the gyrocopter really quickly. Now let's take a look at what we got there then. That is... how much meat is that? That is 665 meat right there. That is 133 meat things. So that's 133 charred meat all the way through to 133 meat stews. And of course, if you have... Master Chef rank 4, that's going to be even more, because you only need 4 for those, so instead of 5, so yeah. We also got 125 plus some more rotten flesh, loads of leather, just an absurd amount of bones, how much glue is that worth? Wrong one, it's not telling me, hang on. So with advanced engineering in a chemistry station, that's enough to make 344 glue. That's a lot of duct tape, as well as three and a bit stacks of cement, a stack of cobblestone. It's just a really good POI, along with 140 animal fat for me. Of course, I have boosted harvest rates from the Huntsman perk, so I will be getting more than just the average player would. But it's still a really good POI for this kind of thing. Of course, the drone is filled with stuff as well. You'll get a decent amount of nitrate from this as well. Right, let's fill up the gyrocopter. Oh, the gyrocopter is filled up. Um, so I am just full. Okay. So now in total, including the meat I got from other missions there, I have 908 meat, which is enough for 180 meat things, along with 181 rotten flesh, which is enough for a lot more farm plots or hobo stews if I want to make those instead. Yeah, today was a very profitable day when it comes to food and farming. I'm going to head back to the base and sort out my inventory and see if I can't make some more farm plots as well with all that rotten flesh. Alright, so I am back at the base. I'm just sorting out my inventory here and I'm going to take all the aloe I grew earlier and turn all that into first aid bandages. 43 more should be more than enough. I doubt I'm going to run out of... Uh, any as it is anyway but you know it doesn't hurt to get more. I'm also crafting up another 26 farm plots just to finish out the farm. So one of the things I'm still actually lacking that I'm going to need a lot of to make a lot of food is glass jars. I know it's kind of a weird one. You would kind of expect me to have millions of those but I just don't and it's mostly because of all the glue I've had to craft. So I am going to smell in just all the sand as well as getting a little bit more clay because I don't think that's going to be enough. And I'm going to make as many jars as I possibly can to just solve the problem. I'll take them all out to a river, I'll fill them, and I'll have all the water I could ever possibly need. So let's get that started. And each sand gives me four, and I need ten for one jar. So we're going to get a lot of jars from that. But I have so much sand that I could just afford to do that because obviously I live in the desert. There's a lot of sand. Right, so it looks like I've got a about 20 more slots. Let's make some yucca seeds. Plant those down. Still have some slots open. Oh yeah, I'll save those for the chrysanthemum. So we're, we've got the full farm going now. This is looking pretty good. I kind of want to give it a little bit of a, like, frame. Yeah, let's do that actually. It's kind of annoying me, this transition here. There we go. I've made it look a little bit more nice. I've made the transition between the terrain and the blocks less severe. Uh, while I was doing that though, the chrysanthemum grew, because it's obviously out of sync with most of the rest of the farm here, so grab those, turn the rest into seeds, and then we can fill out another row of chrysanthemum. We'll have plenty of paint in no time. I will at some point stop all the crops from growing and just plant them all at the same time so that they're not out of sync, because that will annoy me forever. Uh, I'm going to get back to transferring all the stuff from the gyrocopter to the base. And I'll see you guys when I've got something interesting to show you. Apparently I had corn seeds just in my inventory. Oh yeah, I remember now. I 
gathered up a load of corn near Trader Hugh and then turned into seeds and then stored it away. Let's see if we've got any room to plant this. If not, we could always break some yucca. I'm I'm not attached to the yucca to be honest. Let's see. Yeah, I'll I'll break some yucca for this. I don't need any more. You get the seed back, nice. I actually thought I just killed the crop. I, actually, I genuinely was surprised by that, right. Well, there you go. Right, there we go. Now there's loads of corn planted as well. That's going to be much better. We're going to be behind on potatoes, which seems to always happen to me when I farm. Potatoes always get left in the damn dust. There's another 200 jars crafting. Nice. What I'm going to do in the meantime, and I'm not going to show you guys this in much detail because it's very miserable to watch, is I'm going to cycle clay. And what that means is if you craft a topsoil, a block of topsoil, 16 clay, and then you harvest the topsoil, you get more clay than it takes to craft a topsoil. As you can see, 16 to craft, and I got 39 out of it. Now that is because I have mother load 4, but believe it or not, even without mother load, that is still a net gain. I think you get 24 without mother load. You do still gain clay by crafting one topsoil, placing it, and then breaking it you get more clay back. I'm going to do that because I'm sick of getting sand. There is sand everywhere and I need more clay for various things. So I'm going to turn this all just loads, loads of topsoils. Let's go for like 30. And I'm going to do that for a length of time that would probably be considered by most to be insane. But you don't have to watch that. So I'm going to do this for a while and get back to you guys. Okay, so it's the night of day 33 here. I've got myself a couple more stacks of clay. Now that's not actually that fast for how long it took. But the thing is, is there's no real damage to the terrain. That would just need some blocks to go over that to bring it all up to the same level. And I really dislike disrupting the terrain by digging clay. I think it's really annoying, so that's why I did that. I also took a paintbrush and stripped all the paint off of the main building in the ranger station and that was just to see exactly what every block was so that I know exactly what I need to do to the upgrade in the future. I know it's pretty ugly right now but it's better in my opinion because now it's all natural materials like cobblestone and wood and concrete and stuff other than it being like 25% blue paint, 25% wood, 25% cobblestone and 25% white paint. Now it's all just building materials which I can paint over perfectly fine. There's also some burned paint I think here. Yeah we'll fix that. The way I did it by the way was doing paint surface and paint all sides and left clicking and it strips the paint away. This is a bad example because it's a really small part. We can do it to something else in a second but let me clear the paint off of this first. Anyway so I can show you exactly how this works on the floor here. This is on paint all sides and paint surface and what that's going to do is anything you paint is going to be applied to every surface of the block that you click and paint surface is going to find a continuous stream of blocks to apply the paint to or in this case remove the paint from. So if we look at this floor here and maybe jump back up and then left click it removes all the paint from the entire surface. Some blocks will be missed for weird reasons you just have to go through and make sure you grab those and then if we look at it from the underside surely there's a way in here here we go you can see it's applied to this side as well and it means you can really easily strip paint off of big areas if you want to you know figure out what shape you're looking at or figure out what paints you want to use instead you can do that and I'm just doing that so that when I do eventually get to renovating the ranger station, it's just a bit easier for me to make sense of. And I just decided to do it then for no apparent reason. I have no explanation for that. So yeah, it doesn't look pleasant the way it is. Maybe you like it, I don't know. But it looks better, in my opinion, with it all just being normal colours rather than weird mixes of paint and construction materials. And of course this is on the inside as well, it looks a lot cleaner with just the removal of the weird paint. But yeah, that is pretty much all I've done in the past like hour, was dig clay, craft jars and strip the paint off of this so I could get a better look at it. Speaking of crafting jars, we have many of them now, we can craft a load more. 
I'm going to take these jars out to a water source and fill them up because we don't have snow to do it the easy way. I'm somehow creating water by doing this. This game's water physics are completely busted. Anyway, that's a lot of murky water. I'm going to need some more campfires, I think. Let's see, let's place some just here. And I have a cooking pot for each one, of course. So I am going to boil up two of these murky water sacks into regular water because you'll need a load of boiled water if you want to make like stews. Let's do one, two, five here, and then one, two, five here. Need a little bit more fuel there. And then I'm going to keep a good like 250 for paint, and the rest I can just keep for glue or whatever at any point. And of course, I'm going to have a lot more jars coming in future as well, because I'm just going to use all the sand I put in there for jars. Okay, so we have solved the water issue, we've solved the meat issue, and of course the farm is slowly solving the rest of the food issue along with the paint issue. So several problems have been solved today, and that Bob's Boars and Carl's Corn POI really helped. Yep, I think what I'll do once I have enough seeds to do it anyway, is I'll do an entire crop of corn. Oh. They all just grew as I was looking at them. That was really weird. <laughs> uh, well, let's harvest the ones that have grown at least. All right, and the rest are obviously on a different cycle. Um, How much corn did I get from that? I got seven, I got seven seeds and 120 actual corn. Great rates there, game, great rates. I do have a video on how all of these Things are calculated, by the way. I'll leave a little thing up in the top right if I remember. If I don't um, and you want to see it, comment and I'll remember to do it. So let's get 30 corn seeds and then let's get 8 more potato seeds. I really want to just overpower this farm with corn and potatoes in particular. And anything else I want to put as chrysanthemum. The other crops are just here to stop me wasting space. I feel like I've said that too many times. I do apologise for repeating myself. Uh, but yeah. Once... What I was saying before the crops just popped into existence out of nowhere was I want to do like a whole crop of corn and then get like a hundred seeds so that I can always create another crop of corn if I need it and then do the same with potatoes and then do the same with chrysanthemum and then once I've done all that that's going to make sure I'm going to have all the corn and potatoes and corn seeds and potato seeds if I need them as well as all the paint I could ever desire thanks to this farm. It's just going to take a matter of days, because it obviously takes about two days for all this to grow, which means I have to do other stuff in the meantime, which I have some ideas for. But yeah, I got a lot done today, it solved a lot of problems for the future, including paint, food, water, glue, farm plots, anything like that solved, basically from one POI and a farm. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at isprebuiltyt. And of course, if you want to join the Discord, it will be linked in the description. Thank you to my channel members for making these videos possible. And I'll see you in the next episode of Desert Ranger.